Hi, it's Tony from CassetteComeback.com and I'm here to bring you a short video regarding the new Recording the Masters Fox C60 cassette. So, what's so special about this cassette? Well, it is the first brand new audio cassette that's been manufactured for a long time. I know people could argue that the Maxell UR is readily available, but we don't really know how much of the tape stock in that is actually old pancakes that are just being used up, whereas the Fox is brand new. So this is a normal bias cassette or a type one. And if you want to have a look at it a bit closer, which we will do, we can see from the, uh, the brownness of the tape, just let me just wind it on just a little bit. I haven't got my bic here, ha ha ha. Let's just wind it on a bit and let's see if we can get focus on the actual tape itself. Right, okay. If we look, we can see the tape itself is a nice brown color. So this says to me that it is a pure ferric oxide. Some people have been saying, oh, these could be super ferrics, but um, RTM themselves have said that this is based on an old AGFA and BASF formula. So it's a nice brown, it's a nice pure ferric oxide. The shell itself is very nice. I mean, we can see it's got screwed in the bottom, so it's not a sealed shell. And if we turn it around, we can just see that on the, the actual slip sheet inside it's got the recording the masters logo on it nice looking hubs yeah it's not a bad shell at all it's nothing spectacular but then again really they're not really being made anymore so anything that's good and competent is going to be good enough the only thing i will say which is quite strange if you look here at the actual guidance peg the tape actually doesn't go around it it goes on the inside of it which i think is a little bit strange but other than that yeah it's a fairly decent looking all clear cassette inside here we've got the j card which says proudly there you can see it made in france yeah and you also get whoops a couple of stickers to put on the cassette so that's what you get inside one of these so what to do now is let's fire up a deck let's get some music into it and let's see what this sounds like okay the deck i'm going to use for this test is my iowa ads 950 why use this deck well it's because it has built-in test tones and we'll be able to see how it calibrates because you can do it manually and there is also a visual representation of it now this deck if i go down here you can see that both the bias and the level are at 12. Now this deck has been personally calibrated by myself to Sony UX 1988 chromes. Well, I say chromes type 2, but um, obviously there'll be a little bit of play needed to see how the Fox records. So let's put the Fox in, which is already in there. Sorry. And let's see if we can calibrate this up. So let's just go up to the display. I'll break it up and let's start a test recording of this. Right. Okay, let's see how the calibration is. So, compared to the Sony, the levels are down, but the bias isn't. So, let's crank up that level. Oh, by the way, I'm not using Dolby on this. I know you should use Dolby on some, but I'm not going to. Okay. Now, as we put it there, the bias is a little bit down, but... To be fair, it's very solid that. That is a very solid readout. The bias always flickers a little bit, but there's not a lot been needed. If we actually look at the actual bias controls itself, it's uh, virtually bob on for the bias and just a little bit of extra level for the record sensitivity, but we've got it pretty stable there. So let's record some music onto it. And let's see how hard we can drive this.
there we go. So what's the first thoughts about this tape? Well, as you can see, that was an extensive test in any way, shape or form, but the results are good. Basically, this has hiss, but it is a type one. They all have hiss. The D had hiss, the AR had hiss. If you want to use Dolby on it, I'm sure it'll be fine. It calibrated very well. And if you want to look at the video again, you'll see while I was calibrating it, when I got the settings there, it was very stable. This could be purely because it's a new tape and hasn't had time to degrade a bit, whereas the D and the AR, you know, I've got decades of age on them. So maybe they have degraded a bit, but this is very stable. As we can see from the levels, I cranked it up to about plus six. I mean, obviously there's different scales on different decks. Plus six on the Iowa might not be plus six on the Nakamichi, but it took there and I couldn't hear any audible distortion. And like I say, this isn't a test for oscilloscopes. This is just for my ears. And to me, this sounds pretty good. The D and the AR also sounded well, but here's the thing. This cassette cost around £4 each shipped to my door and I live in the UK and these come from France. So I guess part of me is thinking there's two sides to this story. One, this is a good cassette that's brand new and it means us tapers will always be able to get brand new good quality cassettes from Recording the Masters. So that should be loaded and this should be supported on this. Indeed, I bought a box and I'll probably buy more. However, the other side of the coin is, I don't believe this performs any better than a D, and Ds in 60 format can be readily got for around a pound each, let alone four pound each. So it's up to you. If you want to support them, support them. And I think it's well worth supporting. But like I say, you're getting a very competent, very good Type 1 Ferric. Perhaps someone will do a more in-depth review, but I've just done this for those of you now who are thinking about getting them so you know what to expect. Thanks a lot. And don't forget, if you want to get any other cassettes that you're hungry for, go to my website, cassettecomeback.com. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.